G'day guys, uh, in this video I'm just going to be putting a smooth boost controller on the supercharged Jeep. Let's go. So a quick rundown uh, just before I get stuck into it. So we've got the, the Magnuson on the Jeep and uh, everything runs awesome but uh, it's just got um, a bit of light switch, I guess you call it boost. Uh, so you just be cruising along and you, you just got to throttle, 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 and then the boost will kick in and throw you in your seat violently and then on and off. And it's because it's, it's controlled with the, the stock, uh, it's just like a vacuum controlled bypass valve. So um, you can see that. So that's in there. But that, uh, just the way it works, it doesn't kick in uh, until really deep in the throttle. So uh, I've been doing a bit of reading and looks like the it's a smooth boost controller, so it pretty much just replaces this vacuum operated bypass valve with a, a throttle controlled electronic valve. So we're going to put that on and hopefully it gives me a bit smoother throttle and a bit more drivability. So I haven't, been, haven't seen any other videos with someone's got one of these on a Pentastar, so we'll um, chuck it on and see how it goes. So here's all our parts, just a quick overview. So we've got the actual controller with a couple of connectors coming off. Uh, just a little extension wiring loom. This is a little dial controller. You can stick on the dash somewhere uh, just to tune it in. Almost like a uh, throttle controller. And uh, the actual module itself, which bolts onto the supercharger. And this is our little arm, which is uh, controlled from the throttle. So I have to get that set up at the right uh, levels so everything works correctly. And then just a little bit more of a wiring loom. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the first step is going to be uh, getting the, the correct cable off the throttle for the 0 to 5 volt signal. So I'm going to get in under the seat now and uh, try and get the right cable out. Well, hopefully this is the trickiest bit of the install because I couldn't reach the cable which is right in under there. And uh, it's a bit tricky to get to, so I had to get the meter out, find out which cable it is, follow the loom along and manage to find it up in here. So I'm just gonna tap into this cable here with my sensor. This is my zero to five volt from the throttle. And then uh, put this all back together and then run the rest of the cables. Righto, so we've got him all wired in. I've got a little uh, controller mounted in there. Uh, run all my cables. Uh, I've just got the actual actuator plugged straight onto it. There's an extension harness which I've run up into the engine bay, which I'll connect on later, but it says just to test it out while I've got uh, my foot in driving position. So if I power it up, I'll let that hang. So we'll get it into run position. You'll see I've tapped a cable that'll get me some power when it's in run position. And then my foot's off the throttle when it's fully retracted. And as you'll see, as I put my foot down, it slowly matches my foot. So that's wide open throttle. If I back it off, and it moves slowly as I go, so it moves with my foot with a zero to five signal, which is really good. Instead of just the on off that we get with the, the vacuum operated bypass valves, so it all works. Now I just got to mount it up to the uh, supercharger. So back at the actuator, I've just put a couple of marks to show when it's fully closed, because I think once I take this off, that point there will disappear. So a couple of little texture marks to show where I'm at. And now uh, it's got to remove the vacuum bypass valve. As you can see, that goes past where we want it to go, so we need to remember that mark. All 
All right, oh. Um, just while I had the camera off, I just had to trim this little edge because as it was closing down, it was just touching this uh, bolt. So trimmed him off and now uh, I've got it all mounted up and just testing it with the power off. It's very close when it's fully uh, extended. Just this bolt and arm is pretty close in there. I might need to extend this little connector here and bring it just out a little bit so it clears that arm, but it still closes onto its pin. So it's not restricting it. It just, you can see the arm spins as it closes there. Doop. So, but uh, all right, I'll uh, keep recording and I'll crank the ignition. Now I've got it all plugged in and we'll just uh, see if it actuates with my foot. like it worked I could just hear it but um, I'll give it a playback and just make sure that's working since I'm by myself and, uh, and then we'll tidy up I'll cap off this little vacuum line and uh, take it for a spin all right hey, we are cruising first test drive and uh, just going around the block so I've installed my little boost controller just there and I've got it set to full at the moment just because we might as well send it. So let's see if I just light throttle. Oh, I can already hear it boosting. So there was definitely a bit of boost there, uh, which I wasn't getting before, and it was pretty smooth. So I'll go just up here and I'll see if I can get it to just smoothly boost, just gently accelerating. Yeah, that's a lot smoother. Probably can't tell on the video, but <laughs> yeah, really good. Well, uh, after a couple of spins around the block, it is just a completely different uh, feel to driving this car. The uh, supercharger is just really smooth, and I'm actually getting the full, uh, I guess, boost down in lower throttle levels without having to floor it so uh, it's almost more usable than what it was because uh, it was almost the only time I could use it before is if I'm trying to do a burnout or something whereas now I feel like I've got a bit more torque down low uh, and the boost comes on a bit earlier and also smoother so just got this bumpy drive here but yeah all in all uh, really happy and gonna give it a bit more of a test and uh, yeah Happy days, I think.